I began with a base coat of scurvy green. Since I'm working over a black primer, two coats were necessary in order to achieve an homogeneous base coat. To start feathering, I'll rinse my brush and allow a paper towel to soak the excess water. Though you'll see there's still moisture in there. Catching just a pinch of paint on the tip of my brush, I'll feather it through a zigzag downward motion, where the moisture on the belly of my brush will be the one to create a transition as the paint runs low and only water remains. I chose this model specifically due to all the flaps it has. It is a perfect canvas for me to go around practicing on a realistic surface, in contrast to, let's say, practicing on something flat such as a base. While that might be easier and a great way to get a hang of how much paint to use, it won't be enough preparation when it comes to the different surfaces you'll encounter among a wide variety of models. One could also apply said small amount of paint separately, quickly rinse and soak excess water from the brush and proceed to work the paint around through the same zigzag motion. As you can see, some transitions didn't come out as good as others, but as I said, this was my first time trying the technique out. But that just means I can show you how I went around with improving them. On one hand, I applied further layers. I also didn't limit myself to a single technique. Diluting some emerald and removing excess paint on a paper towel, I applied a simple glaze, pulling the paint towards where I want it to be the strongest. This transparent layer will work as a very unintrusive filter, which will tie up any rough transitions. And the same thing was done the other way around, but with scurvy green. The only important thing here is that wherever I finish my brush stroke is where more paint will deposit, so I want to start on the transition and finish on the same color I'm applying. Remember that when we paint we are looking at our models in great detail, and that they will look much better on the tabletop. Having worked around the whole model in the same manner, this first layer ended up looking like this. Thanks to having extended the emerald, I created space for a further blend of foul green, and I am not shying away from making corrections. If mistakes happen, or the blend doesn't come out as I'd like, as long as I don't panic, quickly clean my brush and remove excess water, I can work around the floppy feathering just as I did when applying the paint first and blending afterwards. There is no point in just showing you the technique coming out good, since I know that mishaps are bound to happen when trying out something for the first time, so it is important to also show you how to approach fixing said mishaps. As a bonus tip, imagine I want to enhance those brighter points even more. While common sense would tell us to add a lighter color into the equation, we can also consider darkening the shadows even more. This I did by mixing a bit of black into my initial scurvy green, and feathering very lightly into the shadow areas to up the contrast. Thank you for watching today's video, and I hope you found it helpful. 
An extra thank you to my Patreons old and new who give me their extra support each month. I'm preparing something big for next week, so make sure to subscribe if you're not to not miss out.